I made my first million dollars at 22 years old. And if I would have known these five skills by 18, I know for a fact I would have done it much, much faster. Some of the things that we're going to be going over, some people don't apply in their entire lifetime. And so I can guarantee that if you want to be farther ahead than 99% of the population, then you need to watch this video until the end. The reality is that the only difference between someone that is rich and someone that is not is the way that they act and the skills that they have. You don't become a millionaire and then start acting like one, you act like a millionaire and that's what gets you the million dollars. Now, some of the things that I'm going to be going over are things that I was able to apply myself as I was going through it. And others are things that took me years to learn. And so the first skill is forward thinking. And this is something that took me years to apply. And this idea is all around being able to analyze where it is that you're going. And you don't need to have all the answers because nobody has it figured out, but you need to create a prediction about where you're going and if what you're doing can get you there. For example, if you want to be a millionaire, but you're working a dead end job, get home after work and you're tired and you put on Netflix and you're doing absolutely nothing to get you there, then you're screwed. Whether it's that job, your skills or your habits or any of those things, you're never going to get to where you want to be by doing the actions that you're already doing right now. And what happens to people is that something as simple as this completely goes over their head and years pass by and they wonder why they never got to where they want it to be. And the reason is as simple as them never analyzing and auditing the things that they do every single day. And so what you need to do, and this is something that took me a really long time, is you need to plan out everything. You need to create and design your dream life. You need to decide where you want to live. How big of a house do you want to live in? How much do you want to buy that house for? What car do you want to drive? How big of a family do you want to have? How fit do you want to be? What do you want to be eating on a daily basis? How do you want to feel? How do you want to look all these things, relationships with your family, you need to paint the picture of exactly what it is that you want. And you need to be real with yourself and make sure that you're doing things every single day that get you there, whether it's building a high income skill like advertising, sales, programming, or whether you want to go out there and try to build your own e-commerce business, whatever it is, you need to make sure that you're always taking shots. You're like a basketball player, right? Imagine someone in the NBA, imagine Kobe Bryant, right? Imagine Kobe didn't put in thousands and thousands and thousands of shots. Imagine he didn't stay till late every single time in practice going out there and trying to become a better player Then he would have never became Kobe. And there's so many people out there that, you know, they live to 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. And I speak to these people and they look back on their life and they're disappointed about the things that they didn't achieve. But the bottom line is that you can't be disappointed about the things that you didn't achieve with the work that you didn't do. And so the first step is make sure that you plan everything out, write out your dream life, exactly what it is that you want and make sure that you're taking shots every single day. Like if you're a basketball player, because that's the only way that you're ever going to get there. The second skill is education. And there's this really famous quote by Mark Twain that I love. And it says that I have never let schooling get in the way of my education. And I love that quote because it explains how going to school isn't the only way for you to get an education. The thing that most people do is they go to high school, right? They go to college, they graduate, and then they completely check out and they are done learning, right? They stop seeking knowledge. And that is one of the biggest reasons why people stagnate. If you want to become rich, you need to constantly be coming up with ideas. You need to be creative in problem solving. You need to be able to connect the dots between a lot of different things. And the bottom line is that most people like myself, we're not naturally good at this. And so what I've done for years that has allowed me to constantly come up with new ideas and to be creative with problem solving, even though it's not natural to me, is this hack. And my favorite way to do that is by reading and listening to podcasts. Reading has completely changed my life. And it's really one of those things that started everything for me. I literally remember like it was yesterday sitting in my first ever college class, uh, a huge auditorium. Dr. Cornelius was a professor that's this lady and she was teaching about, you know, American history and all these different things. And I'm just there sitting in the back on my phone and I'm reading Think and Grow Rich. And I remember reading this book and just getting these ideas and getting this new mindset of like, man, maybe one day I can become rich. And I look around and I ask myself, like, what am I doing here? Do I really want to graduate from college, get a job and work a nine to five my entire life? And so that was really the beginning for me. And that was with reading. And so what it does is that it puts new ideas in your brain. And then all you need to do is you need to let your brain do its things. I mean, the brain is so fascinating. It's always doing 
doing all these crazy connections and doing all these different things, all you need to do is you need to constantly be feeding it. And if you're not feeding it, then that's why you don't have any new ideas. That's why you're uninspired. That's why all of these things. And it's because you have stopped learning. And so a trick that I do sometimes is that I like to read a couple of different books at the same time. And I'll read a chapter of one book one day and then another chapter of another one. And I'll constantly be switching in and out of the same books. And what that does is again, different ways of feeding your mind so that it could use all that information along with everything that you have going on to come up with brand new ideas. And the same exact thing with podcasts. In 2016, when I was working a nine to five job, I had a one hour commute. So one hour there and one hour back. So I would drive two hours every single day. And every day I would listen to at least one podcast episode. And I remember my favorite podcast at the time was the MFCO podcast by Andy Frisella. If you haven't listened to that podcast, really good. And I remember just listening to this podcast and always being able to be in a state where you're constantly educating yourself because that's going to be the only way for you to come up with new ideas and solve problems. I know for a fact that if you start applying this today, you know, just listen to a podcast, start with every couple of days, start reading a book, a business book, whatever it is, you're going to see how you're constantly going to be coming up with new ideas. Next up, we have eating for performance. And this is really one of those millionaire skills that a lot of people don't talk about, but is absolutely crucial. If you're going to go out there and build a business, if you want to get home from work and still have the energy to try things, then you need to make sure that your diet is on point. And that all comes down to this idea of eating for performance. Listen, when you're an entrepreneur or you're trying to go out there and build a business, you're like a sports person. You're the same exact thing as an athlete. And what do athletes do? Athletes are, you know, they take care of their health and they take care of their eating and they make sure that they're exercising. You have to do every single one of those things, but as an entrepreneur. And so, for example, exercising is consuming information, right? Reading books, podcasts, all these things, because you're exercising the most important thing for an entrepreneur, which is your brain. What do entrepreneurs do? Entrepreneurs and what allows people to build a successful business or fail a lot and then eventually see success. It's all about decisions, right? You have to make good decisions. That is the difference between someone that's a beginner and someone that's a professional, someone that, you know, anything that they start up just see success really quickly. And it's because they make different decisions. This is something that I have done for years, and it's to look at food completely different than most people. When I look at food, I see it for what it is, which is an energy source. You're feeding your body with energy so that it could turn that energy, it could turn that food into nutrients and allow you to keep performing, right? Not all food is created equal, right? You have milkshakes, you have junk food, you have candy, whole foods, and all these different things. And without becoming a nutritionist here, the whole point is that you need to listen to your body and you need to look at food as a source of energy. And you're going to have to feed your body with foods that make it feel good. And everybody knows what that is for them, right? Like maybe you eat pizza and you feel great, right? But then you get tired and you crash. And so the bottom line is that everyone's different and you need to listen to your body to make sure that you are feeding it foods that allow it to perform at the highest level because that's what's going to allow you to make better decisions. And so a trick that I've done for years that has helped me with this is something called intermittent fasting. And basically what this is, is that you assign yourself an eating window and you only eat during that window. So for example, my eating window is from 12 PM to 8 PM, right? So basically I skip breakfast because all these articles and all these people that have been feeding you that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. That is absolute BS, right? Like the people pushing that, are cereal companies that want to make sure that you're eating, you know, cereal for breakfast and buying more of their products so their stocks can keep going up, right? So breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. This is just something that you have to get used to. And so now in the mornings, I don't even get hungry and I eat my first meal at 12 p.m. So I break my fast at 12 p.m. with an actual meal. And then I have another meal, a snack at around 3 to 4 p.m. And then my final meal at around 7.30 to 8 p.m. And here's what this does. The most taxing thing on your body is your digestive system when your body's digesting food. That's why you've probably noticed that after lunchtime, like you're a little bit slower and you know, you get tired after lunch and all these different things. And so with intermittent fasting, what that's been able to do for me is that I start work at 7 a.m. in the morning and from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'm able to get an insane amount of work done because I have this ability to hyper focus on the things that I'm working on. And it's not because of some superpower or whatever it is. You can do it too. It's just because your body is not having to waste resources on digesting food. So do some research on intermittent fasting, but I highly recommend this. And I know for a fact that something as simple as realizing that eating
eating for performance is extremely important because you're only seeing food as what it is, which is an energy resource and not as some short term satisfaction for eating this food that, yeah, it may taste good initially, but it's going to make you feel absolutely terrible and therefore hinder your ability to make good decisions. The next skill is saying no more often. And this is something that's really a struggle for everyone. It's a struggle for people that are broke and it's a struggle for people that are extremely rich. When you're extremely rich, you have all these opportunities and all these different things being thrown at you that you need to make sure that you understand when to say no and when to say yes. And saying no is sometimes more important because what happens is that if you say yes to too many things, then when a great opportunity actually comes, you don't have the bandwidth or the space to be able to take that on. And this is something that applies to almost everybody. Now, this is something that I understood early on, and that's this idea that getting to where you want to be is going to take sacrifice. You're going to have to do things differently than what you're doing right now, because everything that you've done up to this point has gotten you to where you are. And so if you want something different, then you need to change things and you need to change the way that you're doing things, the way that you're thinking, the skills, the habits and absolutely everything. And so when I was, you know, 17, 18 years old, just graduated uh, high school, I was broke, right? Lower income family. And really, I'm trying to figure out how can I buy a Lamborghini one day? That was one of my biggest goals as I was coming up. And I realized that it was going to take obsession. And so what I did very early on is that I had absolutely no problem with saying no, saying no to going out, saying no to going out and getting drunk with friends, saying no to going out on Friday nights and getting absolutely blasted, saying no to all these different trips and all these things. And I'm not saying that you have to completely punt your 20s, your 30s or your entire life until you see success. But just take this idea of knowing that you're going to have to say no more. And even if it's for a short period of time, like for me, I was hyper obsessed and I said no to absolutely everything for literally two to three years where I was working 18 hour days nonstop. Now, do I recommend that for everyone? Probably not. And I not only that I don't recommend it, but I don't think that everyone can do that. But I know that making that huge sacrifice for those two to three years absolutely set me up for the rest of my life because I made millions of dollars in those two to three years where I completely went all in. I ignored everything and I just went all in on business myself and pushing towards the goals that I wanted to achieve. And so I think this is something that can absolutely help everyone. And that is make sure that you're saying no more often. You're going to have to do things differently to get to where you want to be. And I know that that is something that is going to be crucial to a lot of people, especially younger people. And the final millionaire skill is leveraging credit cards. Now, this was something that I did not understand at all when I was first getting started. So I remember when I was first growing my business and spending money on advertising, I would use my debit card. And when you're using your debit card, a couple of things happen. One, you're at a huge risk because if your credit credit card gets stolen or something happens or whatever, debit cards have a lot less coverage than credit cards do. When you're using a credit card and you know you go to a gas station or you put your credit card somewhere online to buy Dogecoin or whatever it is, if your credit card gets stolen and it's a credit card, all you need to do is you need to call American Express or you need to call Capital One or MasterCard or whatever. And literally within a couple of minutes, you'll have that money back because it wasn't you. You're covered for fraud. But with debit cards, you don't have that. So the first thing is make sure that you're leveraging credit cards for that fraud protection. And the second and most important thing is for rewards. Listen, you're spending money anyways. You're going to go out to eat tomorrow. You're going to go out to eat later for lunch, right? You're going to go to the grocery store and you're going to buy something. You're going to go and you're going to put gas. You're going to buy things, right? And most people don't think about the fact that there are different credit cards out there that give you different rewards for different things. And so, for example, for myself, I make an extra 40 to $50,000 a year, which is literally like a full time salary for one of my employees, I make that in a year simply from credit card reward points, right? Now, you're probably not going to make 30 to 40 grand in a year because that comes from spending a lot. But the bottom line is that it's so much easier to not pay attention to that and to just go on to the day to day and spend the money anyways. But what you need to do is you need to do research and make sure that you're getting the right credit cards for what it is that you're doing. Maybe you have a credit card to put gas because it gives you three to four times the points or something like that. Something that's been huge for us has been finding credit cards that give a lot of rewards when it comes to advertising. And what you're going to notice with these credit cards is that they have limits of how much they give in reward. So for example, the Chase Business Inc card. So that credit card gives 3% cash back on the first $150,000 on advertising. And so that's the first credit card that we start with. And when we're running ads for the business, for the e-commerce stores and for everything, we use that credit card until we get up to the 150 grand spend. Then we go back to another card and to another card and we keep maxing out all the different cards in terms of rewards. And that is our hack 
hack for how we generate all this extra revenue and all this free money from money that you're going to spend anyways throughout all these credit cards. So make sure that you learn about that and that you study it and that you go out there and you start getting some credit cards, even if you don't use them all the time. And most importantly than all of that, even though you're using a credit card, make sure you treat it like a debit card in the sense that you should never, you should never, never, never. And I can't stress this enough. Never spend money on a credit card that you cannot pay off at the end of the month. That was a huge hack for me as I was coming up. And it's that I would never live above my means. Never spend money on a credit card with this idea of I'm just going to make the minimum monthly payments for the next 60 years and I'm going to pay this off. Never do that. OK, always make sure that when you're spending money on credit cards, you can pay it off at the end of the month. But it's better to use the credit cards that are going to give you rewards as opposed to using a debit card that's going to give you nothing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, with these millionaire skills, I know for a fact you're going to be able to go out there and in a much easier way, be able to make your first million dollars and not only make it, but also be able to multiply it. Now, do me a favor and go down below and leave me a comment on which millionaire skill do you think I missed out? I'm going to be reading all of them and replying. And do me a favor. If you enjoyed this video and you want more videos like these, hit a like, hit a comment and subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more coming. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.